Three teams. Three PSOC powered robots. And one goal. The clock is ticking and these brainiacs are busy trying to create the ultimate color driven speed machine. Stay tuned for part two of the PSOC challenge. I'm nervous, I'm excited, I'm having a blast. Welcome back to the PSOC challenge. The guys are busily working and hopefully everything is going okay. It's hard to tell whenever you're doing the project. Let's go, let's go check. My personal belief and the belief that I communicated to the team, which they've bought into, is the key to success is simplicity. Distance sensor. I'm just checking the distance to the wall, reading it off the voltage. We are going to work very hard and fast to get the basic robot function working, which we hope will then give us time after the basic function is working, add the bells and whistles to uh, gain the additional points. All right, so uh, I'm going to put it in um, proportional control mode and then uh, stick it down to the course and we'll see if it can make it around. So you can see sometimes it slows down, sometimes it stops. Um, each motor has a minimum duty cycle required to make them actually turn under load. And right now it's, it's at that threshold. It's trying to run at about 60% duty cycle and it's not moving. So if I give it a tap, it'll move and then hopefully continue the course. I just want to emphasize how good the guys are on my team. I've always believed is that managers don't hit home runs, mm -hmm. players do. And these guys are out there hitting home runs right and left. Right now, uh, it's just proportional control, so it overreacts to some turns, and that'll cause some wiggling and uh, sort of vibration. Mm -hmm. But as we add derivative and integral terms, uh, that behavior will go away, it'll be more smooth and uh, more fast. It won't slow down to take turns mm -hmm. when the turn isn't a big deal, when it just drifts off course slightly. So performance should get better. Right now, it's, it's almost getting all the way around the course um, reliably, uh, and then we can start going for speed. We've set up redundancy, so we got two of us working on separate control schemes okay. for the motor so that we have a redundant uh, design so we succeed on that level. And then on the, on the, on the back side, we've got for those, you know, 25% each creative piece hockiness. We've got a couple guys working on some cool stuff. So my job is I uh, first, when we first got the line sensor, I characterized the sensor. Um, Ross here is doing a um, digital decoder scheme on the line sensor. I'm kind of working actually in parallel on a backup method um, using an analog control scheme. We have the individual pieces working. We've got okay. the sensor working, we've got the analog differential piece working. Um, so now we're working on the digital decoding piece. Oh, okay. We split the group out so that each person has their, their own task. Basically, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. I am actually wiring power for the uh, motor control boards. So oh, okay. we're just splitting it out a little bit so we can bring it to our board a little bit cleaner. We lost a little bit of time uh, when we switched to this configuration versus the one that uh, was an example. We needed to fab taller standoffs to raise the board up above the motor height and the, so the front actuator. So you made this, these little things right in the 3D printer then? Yes. It's a printer bot. It's the greatest thing you could possibly imagine for a hobbyist. Uh, it's like a hot glue gun, except that instead of extruding hot glue, it's extruding plastic. So this is a hot end right here, and plastic is pushed down into it through this mechanism right here. And then the rest of it's just a bed that moves in this direction, a head that moves in this direction, and a bridge that moves in this direction, and it puts down the plastic draws a, an outline of a shape and then moves up and does it again and keeps building it up layer by layer and prints a three-dimensional object. So we have three surprises that we're working okay. on. The first is we're going to do all of our line detection and measuring where we are relative to the line using the digital filter block. So it's a separate coprocessor. So the CPU won't even be involved with determining where the line is. The second is for our color detection. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that all in hardware using oh, yeah, yeah. DAX comparators and the op amps to determine which of the four colors we are seeing. Oh, wow, you got a little uh, piece of rave going on there. <laughs> the third thing that we're going to do is uh, for the cool points, uh, we're going to play music. We have uh, voltage DAX, so mm -hmm. we can generate a waveform, and we use DMA to generate uh, musical tones. We'll oh, play music yeah. while we run around the course. 
Strategies are set and processes are in place. Join us next webisode for a look into the challenges that each team faces on their quest to be the PSOC Challenge Champion. Stop! Close your laptops.